Welcome to Let's Talk Pharmacy. Today we will complete our talk about the autonomic nervous system. In this video we shall discuss the effect of the sympathetic nervous system on our body. First as we mentioned before, the sympathetic nervous system is the superhero that saves us during emergency or danger. It works in certain emergency circumstances that we shall memorize them with 3F, fight, fright, and flight. The first organ here to discuss is the eye. Your eyes need to collect more light for a better vision. So, dilation of the eye pupil occurs, this phenomenon is called madriasis. The second system here is the respiratory system. The oxygen demand of your body will increase, soon you'll probably be running, or your brain is thinking how to deal with the danger. Actually all of these activities require more oxygen, so bronchodilation here is a must. Then comes the urinary system. It's not the ideal time to go, urination is not your preferred activity now, so the detrusor muscle of the bladder relaxes to decrease the urinary urgency. And oppositely the trigoon muscle which is the sphincter muscle will contract to retain the urine better. The sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system are usually opposite to each other except for the male sexual organs. The effect of the sympathetic nervous system is complementary to the parasympathetic nervous system, the sympathetic nervous system causes ejaculation, while the parasympathetic causes erection. On the other hand, in case of the female reproductive system, the sympathetic innervation causes the relaxation of the uterus. During fear you feel dry mouth. That is because the sympathetic nervous system stimulates a thick viscous secretion from the salivary glands. The heart also has a hard work to do, as it has to pump more oxygen carrying blood to organs to be able to face the emergency, so the heart rate increases, and also the force of contraction or the contractility of the heart will increase. Then comes the gastrointestinal tract, it's not the best time for digestion, as our body has other more important tasks to do. So, the motility of the GIT muscles decrease, and the contraction of the sphincters of the GIT occurs. This will cause the digestion process to stop. We also have to know that in our body most of the organs have dual supply of both sympathetic and parasympathetic systems, except for some organs have single sympathetic supply, such as the adrenal medulla the kidney, the blood vessels, the sweat gland and the pilomotor muscle. The first organ with only sympathetic supply is the adrenal medulla. When it is stimulated it releases epinephrine and norepinephrine. And here we have an exception alert. Suppose this is the innervation of the adrenal medulla, we shall notice here that there are no ganglia or postganglionic nerve. The first neurotransmitter released is acetylcholine and acts on NN receptor on adrenal medulla to make it release epinephrine and norepinephrine. The second organ here is the kidney. The sympathetic supply will make the kidney release renin and start a cascade called renin angiotensin aldosterone system. This cascade will result in elevation of blood pressure. The third organ here is the blood vessels. According to target organ, we have two types of blood vessels. Either skeletal blood vessels that supply the skeletal muscles with blood. Or the rest of the blood vessels that supply the rest of the organs of the body such as the skin or the mucous membranes. For the skeletal blood vessels and since you need to use your muscles to run, you need better blood supply, so dilation of these vessels will occur. For the rest of the body blood vessels constriction occurs to help the blood to move to the areas of high demand to be able to face the emergency, that's why you actually become pale when you are afraid. So, the effect of the same system on the blood vessels is different according to the organ it supplies with blood. For the sweat gland we have another exception alert. The sympathetic nerve here preganglionic and postganglionic releases acetylcholine and acts on muscarinic receptor on sweat glands to cause sweating. Normally, postganglionic norepinephrine is released, 
and acts on alpha or beta receptors, but here there is an exception. The last organ here is the pilomotor muscle. It is responsible for goose bumps or raised hair look on skin during fright, it has only sympathetic innervation. This is the end of our video. See you soon. Bye.